Hello there and welcome back to the channel. This is Mel's Gaming here with another The Hunter Call of the Wild video. Now today's video is going to be a selection of highlight clips and we're starting off here on Late and Late where basically I messed up a little bit. I found a piebald cow moose which you can probably just see moving through the brush there and I got to within 60 meters of her and decided I wanted to take her with the bow. Now, I accidentally clicked once too many times on the zeroing button and zeroed it for 20 metres, not 60 metres, so it only wounded her. I ran around trying to find her again after that and she seemingly disappeared, so I reset the time as I had host of this server and I went back to their zone and they were gone, but they were feeding about two, three hundred metres away in a completely different area. And this is what ended up happening with these couple of females, including the piebald, just coming straight towards me. So this time I really did need to be zeroed for 20 metres and managed to absolutely smoke her there on the spot. Now, I didn't include the first bit of me messing it up because it was in brush and there wasn't a really good opportunity for you guys to see what was going on. However, you can see the flesh hit that was the first hit just too low, unfortunately, and probably a little bit far forward, but that second shot was true. And the fact that it just happened with her coming that close, I just really wanted to show you guys that because sometimes things do go wrong. You zero for the wrong distance and that's exactly what happened there. But it's always cool to get a little bit of redemption and just the way that happened was so cool. Now for the next clip we are on Silver Ridge Peaks multiplayer and I came to this lake hoping to see some mountain lions as there's normally one or two hanging around here. However what I actually saw was an albino female Miriam's turkey. Now these guys aren't extremely extremely rare but I do still class them as rare enough to include in a highlights video. Plus I really like the rare turkeys, I think they look cool. And the albinos are definitely rarer than something like the light browns. Although saying that, in recent months I haven't seen as many light brown turkeys as there were when Silver Ridge Peaks released. They have definitely become more scarce since then. However, the albinos and the melanistics and the leucistics are definitely rarer and I love finding them. And an albino hen turkey still looks pretty awesome. Like, you can see those white feathers. And just getting that bit of footage of her actually falling out of the sky there was just really cool so again something I really wanted to show to you guys but you can see completely white feathers no grey markings on there at all so definitely an albino and I actually only hit her in the leg but with turkeys if you hit them with the 22 they're going to die so it really didn't take her very long to die at all but actually a silver scoring female albino turkey just a really nice addition to a secondary lodge or possibly a future multi mount I'm always happy to keep a, a rare female turkey in case I decide to make a new multi-mount and like I said for now she'll go into a secondary lodge and that looks just as good as a rare male on the wall. Now you may be wondering why I'm sitting in a bush. Well this is going to be the next little bit of bow hunting in this video. Once again I found a Basiti Ibex that was kind of worth going for. This level 4 with an estimate of up to 205 and he had definitely the right horns to make diamond so I thought ah he's in a decent place I'll sneak in and see if I can get this guy with the bow again because it was quite fun taking out those two in the previous video with the bow and yeah I basically managed to get into the zone that they were in unfortunately he spooked because once again I chose a bush that was a little bit too close I seem to do that quite a lot but he then walked in to this distance when he came back and just perfectly turned broadside there. And it was a really easy shot to make in the end. So you can see just a really nice shot there through the lungs. And he did make diamond at level 4, which is really nice. And I thought that that would be worthwhile to include because they can make diamond at level 4. So if you see one that has the right horn style with this sort of nice big curve, they can make diamond. And that shot was almost a little bit too far forward but it was just enough to clip the lungs and the spine as well so he wasn't going anywhere with that but yeah I really enjoy bow hunting in this game a lot more than I thought I did so I've been trying to take several animals with the bow and this clip is no different this fallow deer here on Te Awawara I tried 
I was hoping that I could take him with the bow, but unfortunately, the angle that I came into this lake, he was stood right where I ran in, drinking, and unfortunately that meant I spooked him. Now, I hung around in his zone, hoping that he would turn around and come back, and I'd get a shot at him with the bow. However, he just was wandering off nervous in a completely different direction. At this point, he's on the other side of the water here, and so I decided as soon as he gave me a shot, I would take him with the M1, just to avoid losing him, because he did look absolutely huge but then saying that i always say the fallow deer look huge when they're level fives like when they've got the diamond rack i think they always look massive so managed to drop him there with the m1 no problems at all but just such a wide looking buck and he looked just massive to me for some reason and there was a reason for that he scored 268.30 that is a really big diamond fallow deer he is huge. One of my biggest ever, if not my biggest ever. That is an, a really, really impressive diamond. And there's just something about the fallow deer. I love them so much. They are definitely one of the most impressive diamonds in the game, in my opinion. Just because, again, the size of the antlers on these guys. I so can't wait until there's a great one fallow deer. Because it's going to look awesome. And that shot was about perfect. But yeah, they make diamond at 251.70. And this is a 268.30. That is absolutely huge. That is a really, really big diamond fallow. Now, I had to include this clip with that previous one because, yet again, we are looking at a level 5 fallow deer that just so happened to be drinking at the spot I came into this lake at. And it's just so unfortunate for those two to actually have been right where I ran into the, like, the, the area rather than drinking on the opposite sides of the lake like they would normally be and it was just the way that things worked out again i waited for this guy he did not want to come back to his zone unfortunately so I'm not going to try and take him with the bow but managed to drop him with the m1 and that is a 265.90 diamond fallow so not quite as big as the previous one but again they just look awesome i'm always happy to take down a diamond fallow deer and there's always space for them in a lodge whether it's the uh, the main trophy lodge or the secondary lodge i've always got spaces for these guys now for the next clip, we are once again on a Quattro Kalinas multiplayer server and we are looking at a level 5 Mouflon with some pretty impressive horns. Now I spent a long time sneaking into that zone and I was really close to this guy and I was pretty much lining up to take a shot when the whole herd started moving and eventually spooked off and I was really confused, I didn't think I had done anything wrong. And then I noticed that there was a pack of Iberian wolves moving through the area. Unfortunately, this pack of wolves kept coming in and then fleeing and just spooking the Mouflon constantly. So once again, was forced into, instead of taking this guy with a bow, try and take him down with the rifle. Because once again, I did not want to lose this guy because his horns just looked absolutely huge. He looked really wide, but that is why my bow is there in my inventory was because I put it there ready to try and take him. But unfortunately, as you can see, he is just heading off nervous and they just would not come back despite me waiting there for as long as possible. And unfortunately, unless I have host of a multiplayer where I can change the time back, there's just almost no way of getting them to go back there. So that is why I do carry the rifles as well as the bow, because as much as it would have been fun to get this guy with the bow, I don't want to not get it just because of some wolves moving through the area. With multiplayer, you kind of do have to play to your environment more and play a bit smarter sometimes, whereas if this was on single player, I could just reset the time, reset the map, and he'd be back in his zone. But, as you can see, a 181.10 Diamond Mouflon. And hopefully you guys can see what I mean about his horns being nice and wide. He's a really good looking Diamond Mouflon. Quite often the Diamond Mouflon I've shot, their horns are quite tight to their head, whereas this one is quite splayed out. And I really like that, and I'm so pleased I actually did manage to get him down. I was worried that with the wolves spooking them constantly that I wouldn't actually be able to find this guy, which is always a worry in multiplayer because you can have places where they don't leave tracks and all kinds of things can go wrong but absolutely smoked him with the m1 that shot went almost all the way through him and on the same server 
I found this guy, a level three albino Al Iberian mouflon. And I have been looking for a rare Iberian mouflon ram. I have not seen one in a very long time. Once again, when Quattro came out, rare ibex and mouflon were everywhere. There was melanistics and albinos literally everywhere. I shot so many of them. But again, since things have cooled down with Quattro, they have become a lot rarer and I have gone through many, many herds and many servers looking for rares and not come up with very many at all. And this is actually the first rare mouflon that I have found on PC. So I was really excited to see this guy. Now, I would have gone and tried to take him with a bow, but it was near the end of their drink time. And unfortunately, you can see he was in an area with very little cover for me to actually get into. But that shot, he didn't die pretty much instantly, which is what normally happens when you shoot a mouflon with the M1, as you will have seen with that diamond. They normally drop on the spot. So I was pretty worried that I'd spined him. I knew I shot too high. But there was vital blood, and somehow I'd shot over the near side lung, but got into the far side lung and gone below the spine, which is one of the weirder shots I have ever made. But something I'm really like really really pleased that I managed to get for the trophy lodge something that will look good on a small plaque it's a shame it's a level three but he doesn't have the smallest horns in the world so I'm really happy to add him to the trophy lodge honestly I really like finding the rares the rares in this game are definitely what keeps me coming back I love them so much so very very happy to find this guy and in this next clip, I was actually here in search of a rare as well. I was up here looking for an albino chamois. And unfortunately, there was no albinos, but there was a level 5. And this guy looked really solid. He looked like he had really good hooks on him. And with an estimate of up to 64, I was really hopeful this guy could make diamond. These guys do like to troll. I've had a couple of troll level 5 chamois. But they can also make diamond at level 4. So they're one of those species that... It's kind of hit or miss whether they will make it or not, but he just looked really, really good. And I was really hopeful that he would actually make diamond with those horns. And I just took my time there to make sure I got a nice hit on him. And you can see there, he's dropping already. Really solid long shot there from the 243. And I do like using the 243 for these guys. It's more than capable of taking them down within not very long at all. You can see this guy didn't go far at all before dropping. Really beautiful looking out and just those horns just look so good and when I picked him up he was a diamond at 60 on the dot when they when it's 58 score for them to actually make diamond so two points over which is really nice really beautiful and very solid diamond for the trophy lodge now for this next clip, we are back on Quattro Kalinas. This time we are looking at Greedos Ibex. Again, I was here looking for rares mainly, but I spotted this guy. That is a level five Greedos Ibex with an estimate of up to 108. So a really solid looking Ibex there. And I was gonna stalk in and take him with the bow, which I stalked all the way in. And then when I got there, they were nowhere to be seen. So I got up, started looking around to see where they had gone, and there was once again an Iberian wolf in the area that had basically spooked them off. So I fast travelled out of the area back to the nearest lodge to get me out of being in the way of them coming back to their zone. And then by the time I had run back, it was only five, six hundred metres. By the time I'd run that again, they were moving back through the area towards a zone. So that worked out perfectly and I wasn't going to try and stalk him with him being nervous. So I just dropped him there with the M1. Now, I was slightly worried that that shot might have been low, but when I got over here, it was vital blood, and of course, you can see he landed really beautifully, so I grabbed a couple of screenshots. I love the horns on the Greedos Ibex. The texture on them just looks awesome. I wish they were a bit bigger, a bit more like real life, but a really solid 103.90 diamond when 100.10 is diamond. But you can see that shot was a little tiny bit low. It could have been bad, but it... It got both lungs, which is all that matters, and that is just another really nice diamond taken to go into one of the trophy lodges. And finally, for the last couple of clips, we are here again on Rancho del Arroyo. The first couple of clips are going to be of a couple of diamond pheasants. The hook, once again, I have gotten really lucky with finding two more diamond pheasants for the trophy lodge. This guy that was just walking towards me defensive, so I ran at him, he started to flee, and I took him with the 20 gauge, dropped him, 
pretty much instantly, which is exactly what I like to do. It's always really satisfying to just knock them straight out of the air like that. And confirming him he is a diamond and a really nice size one at 21.10. So a really good size diamond pheasant. And I'm always happy to find these guys to add to the trophy lodge. I was actually here looking for melanistic male pheasant and albino male pheasant. But more diamonds of these guys in the trophy lodge is always welcome. And now the second clip of another diamond pheasant. Again, down at this bottom road spot, sort of the bottom outpost here, I then run up towards that bottom road and I always see antelope jackrabbit, pheasants, coyotes, bighorn. It's just such a hot spot of activity. And the very first pheasant that I actually spotted in this flock was a level three. Now they did go straight into a zone there and start feeding so I quickly put a waypoint on their zone and started to crawl in because I didn't want to accidentally make them flee when I wasn't close enough but he went alert there and I knew that I could hit him from that distance so started to run towards them and they did instantly start fleeing rather than going defensive you can see that it says fleeing but they fleed along the ground rather than taking off straight into the air like some pheasants will do. Now I stood here kind of trying to deter them from going into the brush and they actually turned and flew out away from the brush and I waited until I could get a nice shot on him and once again smoked it straight to the floor instantly with that shot which again is just nice to drop them like that rather than having to track a wounded bird but another nice diamond pheasant at 20.70 as I said I really like these guys I can you know they can go on the small platforms and plaques and I would rather have these in replace of some of the mallards honestly because pheasants I just love them I think they look amazing such a beautiful bird that they have really done a good job of in this game and finally, for the final clip of this entire video, we are in that same area where I just shot that diamond at pheasant, but on a different multiplayer server, and I mentioned that there's normally a good population of antelope jackrabbits around. Well, there was on this particular server, and they were out here feeding, and this one looked a lot whiter than the others. And I was looking at it, and I was, I was like, is that an albino? Is it really? Because I've never seen one in person, I've only seen one on video. And I was just looking at it thinking, is that just a one of the light grey coloured ones? And I'm just wishful thinking that this is an albino because I've, I've done that before, where I've seen one that's a grey, the, the lighter grey colour and in the sunlight it's looked albino. But there was no mistaking it as I got closer. This guy is an albino jackrabbit, which is awesome. Now you're going to see me here spook him and that is completely intentional. The rabbit species in this game will run hardly any distance and then they will just sit in the, their fleeing position. It's kind of odd that they do that but it means that you can get nice and close. And so I was looking now at my hunter mate just to see where I last spotted him. I could see the white spot there from behind that cactus and I was trying to get decently close to it so that we could have a decent look but this guy was very very flighty. It was almost like he knew how much I wanted it. So I managed to pop him here with the 20 gauge that I used for the pheasants. And of course, when you hit a rabbit, they don't, don't go anywhere. But you can see that this guy is very definitely an albino, which is one of the coolest things. Literally one of the rarest animals you can get on this new map. That is awesome. So now I have the pair. I have the melanistic antelope jackrabbit and the albino. Honestly, I'm so thrilled. I have been looking for a few rares on Rancho specifically. Um, albino peccary, melanistic male pheasant, and albino jackrabbit is one of those. And for it to be a male is just so awesome. Really, really beautiful. I love the, uh, th these antelope jackrabbit. I think they are just gorgeous. Definitely my favourite of the rabbit and hare species in this game. They just look amazing. So he had to be the final animal in this video, definitely the coolest and my favourite out of all of them. Thank you guys so so much for watching, I hope you've enjoyed it, and hopefully there'll be more trophies to come very soon in the next video. Thank you so so much, I really appreciate all the support as always, and yeah, see you in the next video, thank you.